Welcome to the 7th Annual CO2 Race Car Challenge. I'm Bob Eden, Executive Director of the Portland Area School District, and I have with me three of the five industrial arts technology teachers that are involved with students in today's race. Uh, the first one is Tim Brandon, the second one is Jamie Quicksall, and the third one is Tom Sakaney. Welcome, gentlemen. Nice job, all that you've done. They're looking spiffy, by the way, too, aren't they? They're looking professional. We appreciate that. Uh, Tim, uh, this being our seventh annual race, uh, what sticks out in your mind as the most important reason of having this race, and how does it apply to other subject areas? Well, this race kind of brings together our entire program. Uh, in our modular lab, the students study uh, different aspects of industry, communication industries, uh, manufacturing, construction. And this project allows the student to start with the research, then they design, and then they produce a product the same way that all products reach us in stores. Um, along the way, they use many science concepts, math concepts. Uh, they have to communicate with one another. And so it's a well-integrated uh, project with all our other school subjects. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Uh, Jamie, um, this is what, your third year that you've been involved with this program? Yes, it is. Uh, what are some of the highlights uh, in working with the kids at Central? The kids just really enjoy working with this project. Um, they just really enjoy themselves with the project. Does it make class more exciting for you? Yes, it does. And, and how does that happen? Do they get fired up and ask questions and do more work? Yeah, they get uh, really involved with the project and um, in weighing it and f figuring out uh, what is going to be best designed for the speed. Um, if they don't go that, that aspect, they go with um, finding the best design for the project. Car number 42 from Chippewa and car number 47, Chris Tenney. Also we have Tom Sakani here with us. Tom, how do the students go about finishing their cars? Some of them have and great finishes. That last race, car hey, there's a number of different ways that they will finish their cars. In my particular um, building at South, they actually they take and they paint them with a paintbrush and after they have the stripes on or numbers or whatever they want they'll go ahead and they'll put a clear coat of polyurethane on usually a gloss finish some of the schools um, have the ability to do uh, spray paint so they'll spray on the color um, so there's a variety of different ways they finish the cars and it's unique for each individual and that's what we like they get to use their creativity and it's a really good experience for the kids gentlemen. Uh, later on we'll be interviewing Brian Warren and Dennis Houghton who are over running the race at this point in time and we'd also like to say a special thank you to Paul Cruz, a counselor here at Chippewa Middle School who is our voice of the CO2 race car challenge for today. So Paul, thanks so much for being a part of this. Sure I'm pleased to have with us uh, Charlie Barrett, president of the Kwood Auto Company who is a visitor this year with us and is going to be a judge next year and I've asked Charlie Charlie, what do you think and of again, our procedure so here with the CO2 race car first challenge? First Any impressions? Well, I, I think that General Motors and Ford and Chrysler and the other car companies ought to be talking to some of these kids about their designs because from a chunk of wood, it's pretty neat what they've uh, done here. I'd also like to meet a couple of these kids. I'm looking at the paint jobs on some of the pieces of wood and uh, that they've turned into cars, and uh, uh, it's pretty professional. So we may want to be talking to some of these guys about uh, not only auto design, but uh, their, their paint work prowess. We certainly could use people like that in our industry. Well, that's so very true, and a very big part of this is career education, as I was talking to Charlie before. Uh, this starts in your mind, it comes out your arm, goes on to a sketch, and then goes on to some kind of drafting scale, and frequently it's done on computer, and then we give them a block of wood through the instructors, and they start carving away, and uh, this is the end product. So we're very delighted with the uh, number of careers that are involved here. And Charlie, we'd like to say thanks to you for stopping out today. Oh, Bob, thanks for having me out. Our pleasure, sir. Nice thanks so much. Back. Earlier, we interviewed three of the other industrial arts teachers, and we're pleased to have with us Dennis Houghton from Holland Woods. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning. Dennis, could you tell us a little bit about some unique features of the program at Holland Woods this year? 
So this is uh, one of the really things that uh, we had as far as a surprise to us and a bonus actually is that uh, for the first time we we've offered this the to this the seventh car. graders red and uh, it's been very successful because of that and, and we're glad to have some of the seventh, grade, seventh graders here today. And we have over 85 cars here today which is an outstanding number and the seventh graders will they be able to participate again as eighth graders next year or will they have that opportunity? Uh, we're hoping that uh, our scheduling for next year will allow other 7th graders to participate. We want to continue offering it to 8th graders, but if 7th graders that did participate this year are there in the class, yes, they will have an opportunity. Well, it's for sure that staffing has caused us some problems throughout the district, but we're very gratified to have all of our industrial arts teachers back next year. And industrial arts technology will continue to grow and be an important part of our middle school curriculum. introduce the other five industrial arts technology teachers and I have with me today uh, Brian Warren. Uh, Brian congratulations on an outstanding job today. Uh, Brian was the uh, the brains the muscle and the backbone of getting it all put together because he's the host here at Chippewa Middle School and we really appreciate all the extra work that he's done. As we rotate this through each industrial arts technology teacher has an opportunity to be the chairperson or the host and uh, Brian has done an outstanding job. So Brian, was there anything special about or unique about this and year's and program that you'd like to highlight? Well, maybe that we got some of the advisory students involved. We have them down on the floor starting the um, starting the cars, finishing the cars, portering them from station to station and moving them around. I also had a talented uh, Lisa Kendrick who uh, made a nice brochure to pass out, has all the names of the racers on the inside and the uh, pertinent information, including the judging stuff on the outside so people can tell what's going on out here. Well that's outstanding. Now who are some of those uh, advisory teachers that you have here with us? I see some in the crowd. Could you mention a couple of their names? Uh, the advisory students, I have uh, Jefferson Yu and Trevor Baker as starters. I have uh, Tyler Zurich, Andrew Page and uh, Brockton Feldman as uh, porters moving the cars around and, uh, and just some other volunteers okay. that, that come down and get on the floor and help make the race happen. I see some teachers here, uh, Ken Meinhart, uh, Jim Hall, uh, Doug Van Horn, um, their classes are here supporting this. Are there any others that I may have missed? Well, you know, you'll see classes come in and out all day. Uh, anybody with uh, any math or anything, any science class like that, they like to come in and watch what goes on and try to apply it to their class. Uh, thanks to, special thanks to Mr. Meinhardt and Miss McGee who, who gave up their gym today and uh, let us race on their floor. At first they were going to go outside and run, but then again they decided to stay in and watch the race, have their kids watch the race. That's, that's great. Yeah, you didn't have to wrestle Ken Meinhardt for the gym, did you? Uh, we wouldn't be in here. Yeah, we would be. <laughs> uh, Ken's a great guy, and we really appreciate him. And a special thanks to those gym teachers. Thanks so much for all your work. My pleasure. We appreciate it. We're so pleased to have three students with us here to talk a little bit about the process that they go through in developing, designing, and actually manufacturing a car for today's CO2 race car challenge. Your name? My name is Andrew Seppo. What school? I go to Fort Gratiot Middle School. Could you tell us a little bit about the process that you went through to design your car? Yeah, well, we watched the movie on how we should design our car, and then I kind of was thinking about aerodynamics, and I kind of made mine, you know, skinny and then I tried to make it look like an arrow because it looked pretty cool so I made frills on the end and then you know just kind of cut it out and then we cut out the top and then the sides and then painted it so it worked out okay. like that. Yeah. And was that a fun process? Yeah it was really fun. Uh, tell me some of the things you learned. I learned basically how to use different kinds of saws like uh, we use a jigsaw and then we use a bandsaw mm -hmm. so 
that really helped me out. And then we're also um, also how to paint. We we use different how to sand, and then we had to paint it with uh, this coder, and then we painted it with different colors. So now, why did you make it like an arrow? That's where the science part of it comes in. I think just because you know, I think it looked pretty cool. I like the shape of an arrow, and like I said, an arrow was originally made to hunt, so it's like an aerodynamic uh, figure or shape. So. All right. Well, thanks so much. We appreciate you. All right. Your name is cool. Josh Blaskowski, Central. Okay. Tell us a little bit about how you went through the process to design your car and get it here today. Well, we didn't watch a movie, but um, we just took a design paper and we set it on our car. It was just a block, so then we cut it out. And I, I made the first car, but I didn't like it, so I made a second car. Okay. So I liked the second car, so then I cut it skinny, long, and aerody aerodynamic so it can go straight and fast, and I got a pretty good time. Okay. And what did you learn in going through it the second time? What changes did you make in your car? Oh, uh, I had to cut it a little thinner, and I had to drill holes in it so it would go faster. Okay. And the drilling of the holes was to make it lighter? Yeah, and more does better design. All right. Thanks so much. Your name in school, sir? Um, my name is Joe Pellegrino. I'm from Central Middle School. Okay. Tell us a little bit about your car and how you happened to get it through the process to today's event. Well, it's, like Josh said, it's all about aerodynamics, and that's what it's pretty much located on. And it depends how heavy the car is, too, because the lighter it is, the faster it'll go. And you want aerodynamics because when the air hits it, it's going to, especially if you have like lots of curves and it's lighter, it'll just curve right off the car. So it won't hit it as hard if you would if it's like a wall mm -hmm. hitting the wind. It's, you're going pretty fast. And Josh, he has an amazing car. So. Is that right? Yeah, he's okay. great at first. So. Uh, what did you do in regards to any kind of lubricants or anything? Did you use any lubricants? Not, not necessarily. I like what we do is we use like band sauce to cut them, mm -hmm. and they're they're wood. That's what they are. And when we use the band sauce, we have to really curve it, and we have to make a design before we cut it. What we do is we have some paper, and we draw it, and then what we do is we kind of like trace it on there after that so and then we cut it and it was it's pretty hard to do and never underestimate your car because i thought mine would go slow my one my race so never underestimate it all right thanks so much glad you guys were here gentlemen thanks well as you can see some of the students really do an outstanding job and they even have some of the terminology down and of course they were very scared to talk but i think they did an outstanding job and we appreciate all they do Thanks. We're pleased to have Angela Polito from Port Huron South with us, as well as her instructor, Mr. Tom Sicani. Angela, you've got your car with you, and she's got a participation ribbon. And uh, later on, we'll be announcing all the winners in each of the divisions. But could you tell us a little bit about your car and maybe point it out to the audience uh, what you're talking about when you mention your car? Thank you. Um, I wanted to make it like a triangle so it can be like a, so the air can go through it easier okay and mr. Sakani helped me on this right here so I can make it like a triangle and I watched the video so he can um, I watched the video so he can um, so we can know how to sand it and how to use the machines mm -hmm. and and you painted it pink yeah and why did you paint it pink because it was like a fun color okay and this well, this is like a car to be glad of. All right, well, that's good. It's a happy car. Yeah. All right, and have you raced yet today already? Yes, I've and raced. And how did you do? I this didn't win, but race. it was a good Russell score. Ryan it was 1.163 1. 1. seconds. Well, congratulations. That's and awesome. Yeah, thank Thanks thank so you. much. And thanks so much to you, Mr. Sicani, for your help. Appreciate it. Thanks again.
pleased to have you here, Mr. Rodenbaugh. Mr. Rodenbaugh is assistant principal here at Central Middle School, and we just heard Paul Cruz make an announcement that many of the cars are running in the high 30s, and one even hit over 40 miles an hour. That's an awesome thing today. What's happening over here? How do you view this program, Mr. Rodenbaugh? Well, it's traditionally a really great program. Uh, what we do is we have some uh, math students in here that are figuring out the miles per hour of the cars that turn by their times. Uh, they, obviously, the cars are beautiful uh, cars. They've worked very hard over. in making them, and then it's really interesting to see the uniqueness quickly. of some of the cars that are here the today. Are almost now, over. at every place that we host this, there's always a little bit of disruption, but comment on the value of it, and uh, is the value far exceeding the disruption that it may create in a building? Absolutely. I think as long as the staff knows that we're going to plan it ahead of time, they can adjust their lesson plans. I think it's valuable to have students come and see the other kids compete. Mr. Uh, we've got five different schools here, including Port Huron South. Uh, so it's exciting to see the kids compete. It's exciting to see the type of um, creativeness they have in making the cars that they do today. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Rodenbaugh. We appreciate you being the host. Thank you. Just come up here and stand up here with me. We'll get you a trophy. And in first place for most original design, Alexandra Andrioni, Fort Gratiot Middle School. Alexandra, come up here. You should get in front. When we get all three of them together, you take a picture of them. Come on up here. Congratulations. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right here, stand with the other trophy winners, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's give the most original design winners a big round of applause. Thank you. You may go back to your seat. Uh, the next category we are going to award a trophy for would be the best finish, that is, the best paint job. In third place, from Chippewa Middle School, for the best finish, Brandon Morgan. Uh, receiving the trophy will be Lindsay Henderson for, for uh, in place of Brandon Morgan. It, stay here. In, uh, in second place, for the best finish, or best paint job from Chippewa Middle School, Alan Ellery. Where is he? Do we have any of these guys from Seoul? I just wondered if we. And the best paint job, I think there was no doubt on this one, from Central Middle School, car number 16, Jake Zoltak. Jake. the best finish winners. Give them a big round of applause. And now we have the most coveted trophies for best in show category, the overall most stunning cars of this show. In third place, car number 44 from Chippewa Middle School, Devin Hawkins. Devon Hawkins. Things. Don't ship on the strings. Watch your feet. In second place, we think, 
Car number 68, we think, from Fort Gratiot, but we're not sure. Tyler Mahaffey, Tyler. And in first place, the best looking car of the whole show, number 43, Andrew Jowett. winners, the fastest cars for 2005, the CO2 Challenge. In third place from Central Middle School, car number nine, Isaac Widener. Widener. Isaac Widener. <laughs> In second place from Chippewa Middle School with a time of 1.083, 37.77 miles an hour, Brandon Morgan, car number 28. Brandon. Once again, Lindsay will receive the trophy for Brandon Morgan. Get over here, Lindsay. And in first place, the fastest car of 2005, which also takes with him the traveling trophy, the large race winning trophy. There it is right there. That one goes to the school. Josh. Blakowski. Josh Blakowski, congratulations, Josh. We're pleased to have with us Andrew Jowett, an eighth grade student from Chippewa Middle School who is in the Industrial Arts Technology class. And Andrew was the winner of the Best in Class or Best in Show Award overall. He's got his uh, beautiful car right here and his trophy and first place winner and also a participant's ribbon. Um, best in Show or Best in Class is a car that just really catches your eye. The first one, there's 70 or 80 of them lined up there and uh, the car that jumps out at you is the one that the judges really look at and he was able to earn that award. So we're gonna ask him to tell us a little bit about uh, how he designed this car, why he designed it the way he did, and any other particulars that he might think of. So Andrew, congratulations. It's a wonderful thing, we're glad you're here. Um, yeah, I just try to get it real aerodynamic, real smooth, a lot of sanding, just try to get it to flow real right and uh, about it, so. Now, how did you think of that design? Um, you see it in a magazine and try to copy it, or is this something that you kind of just uh, no, I created? Just, yeah, created. Um, I just I was thought this or thought about this uh, design when I first heard about the CO2 cars, and uh -huh. that'd be really cool. Okay. And how did you do as far as speed is concerned? Uh, not too good. I think I got the slowest time of like six seconds, so uh, not too good. What happened? Uh, I don't know. Just <laughs> wasn't going fast. Did it go off the course or uh, just uh, really slow? It's just really just slow. Really slow. Oh, all right. But uh, uh, a lot of looks, anyhow, huh? Yeah. yeah, it's a real looker. So we do appreciate all your hard work and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. 